This is the Milo Beasley Show. This is the Milo Beasley Show. There's only one thing you need to know. This is the Milo Beasley Show. And now, here's your host, Milo Beasley. And welcome to the Milo Beasley Show. Dude, 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 dude. We have a great one for you today. I'm so excited. Uh, I don't know the last time I've been this excited about our guest. So please help me welcome at this time. Uh, you may know him as Flo. Please help me welcome Mark Volman. How are you doing, man? Hey, wait, I want to block my face. How are you today? I am doing great. I am doing, I, I'm doing better now that you're here. That's a crazy intro. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, you are in Nashville. Is that correct? Well, Franklin, Tennessee is about 30 miles south of Nashville. That's where oh. I am. I, man, I heard Nashville is the happening place right now, not just for, obviously, the, the country music scene like it has been known for, for many years, but uh, just a, a lot of things, a lot of uh, actors and other musicians are, are, are there. Well, I, I think a big part of it is just where it is in the stream of things in uh, weather and uh, sports, uh, colleges. I mean, it's a, it's definitely a place that kind of covers all the families. It's really a family-oriented city, and uh, so it kind of covers everything. Yeah, I, I get that. And I love. I've I've been there a couple times, and it's a uh, it's a fantastic place to to visit. So I couldn't imagine even even living there. So. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the turtles and the happy together tour. Here we got a little, uh, happy together tour, uh, back this year after, um, uh, a little COVID hiatus. Um, yeah, everybody, everybody had to readjust the, uh, tour, uh, and the proximity of getting out on the road. And it, it took, it took a, almost a year and a half for us to kind of get everything rolling again. I mean, we we are a group that is traveling constantly. Uh, we take breaks, right. but for the most part, uh, we're doing uh, 21 people on buses. Um, you know, so there's a lot of a lot of business that has to be considered when there's uh, something like health issues and and whether we're going to be able to continue the tour and how, how that works out. Uh, absolutely. I, could, I couldn't imagine the logistics that go behind oh. a, a tour uh, like that. So this year, the, the 2022 version, um, of, of course, uh, the, the Turtles uh, headlining. Uh, but Gary Puckett is returning again. A uh, good friend of yours, uh, the association, right? Um, the the Cowsills, who I've actually never been able to to see live. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's, I mean, a great lineup. Uh, the classics, the Vogues. Um, just just the thinking in the grand scheme of things, the the songs that these artists are responsible for are uh, why they're here. Uh, this is uh, really organized in the fashion of an old style 60s show where everybody does their biggest hits. And that was a really important thing that we had to kind of sell to everybody 12 years ago. You have to remember this tour went out in 1984 um, for the right. first time, the Happy Together tour. And it did 84, 85. And then we kind of like took a break while everybody's career uh, kind of manifested itself. And ch everybody changed what they were doing. A lot of solo careers for different people. Gary uh, was always kind of bouncing back and forth to Europe. Uh, so was Carl uh, with the Buckinghams. Carl uh, was always traveling uh, on shows on his own sometimes. So putting the show back together in 84, 85, and then taking a few years where we started kind of thinking maybe we should 
you know, eyeball the possibility of doing the tour again, you know, and, and even then you start dealing with the magnitude of 21 people on a show and, you know, planning out what songs, you know, you'd be surprised the battles that go on of what songs everybody's going to sing. Right. But, so, yeah, that's, and that's one of my questions to you. How do you, how do you go about determining your set list? Um, do you try to change things up from year to year or do you know what the fans want yeah. and that's what they're going to get? That's a good question. Cause that's really one at the bottom of the base of probably the biggest problems we have was uh, assuring the artists that we understand the best way to showcase themselves is by doing their biggest hits. Right. That's what the audience really, in the end result, uh, when they hear Don't You Care or uh, This Girl Is a Woman Now or Happy Together or The Cow Sills, um, when we you know start putting that together, it becomes a matter of trust. You know, them kind of trusting us as to what it's going to sound like and look like. And right. uh, it, it's, I, I, I kind of designed the um, show and the initial thoughts of everything as almost like a play because of the way that the sh songs go, the intros to the songs. We have a host on the show who's a part of the soundscape of the presentation. So it's a, uh, it really brings the show wrapped around the hit songs. That's that's fantastic, and uh, and you throw a couple covers in there. What are what are what are some of your favorite covers to play? Not that we want to give any spoilers on what might be on the set list this year, but what are some of your favorite covers uh, that that aren't your songs that you like to play? We have some nice covers in the Turtle Show, uh, even going back to It Ain't Me Babe. I mean, it was a cover right. of a Bob Dylan uh, song that he wrote that came to us from CBS Records when he was just moving into the prospect of being a solo artist, right. playing just acoustic guitar and traveling. And uh, It Ain't Me Babe was a cover song. Uh, I mean, it would become a, a big hit for the Turtles on the pop charts, uh, but it also, open the door to um, the great songwriters of that era. Um, Jerry Fuller, who wrote pretty much all of Gary's songs. Uh, the songs of the Turtles with Gary Bonner and Alan Gordon being so strong as to their writing. And um, Gary and Alan wrote, She'd Rather Be With Me, uh, She's My Girl, uh, me about you, uh, happy together, Eleanor. I mean, there's uh, there's just a, a lot of thought that goes into the planning of the show with all the different artists. Right. Uh, when it when it goes into that that planning, <laughs> um, how how difficult is it? Because you know you only have a, a certain amount of time that, that you can, you can't yeah. you can't play from noon to midnight. So when it comes to picking those bands and and unfortunately having to leave some of your friends off, uh, that's got to be the hardest decision. It, it's it's hard, but you know we get every year when we sit down and say, well, who would we want? We kind of throw it out to other artists uh, of what songs um, they like. Uh, classics for um, when we started doing things we couldn't do a classics four in the happy together tour without songs like stormy or spooky. Uh, and so you, you're dealing also with an era, a decade of era that we're trying to encapsulate so that it covers this, the sixties from, you know, maybe 1961 to 1970, you know, just, right tips into the 1970s. We've been thinking that maybe that's uh, a desire uh, change might be maybe pull in some of the 70s. They're such great 
songs that the 70s materialized as part of uh, the generation of music that continues to uh, change. Uh, ab absolutely. Do you have any any pre-show rituals that that you uh, that you do with with maybe you know uh, either some of the other bands your your own band is there something that that gets you into that that show mood? Almost immediately, I think I kind of laugh. It, uh, everybody has their own way of kind of warming up, and so uh, groups like the Association, you've got some really fine singers. I mean, those are really different songs, windy and. Uh, uh, never, never, my love, and uh, th those things that made their songs so great uh, back in that period of time are the fact that they really uh, took the time in arrangements. And when you, you know, hear those uh, songs, um, they, they really bring back as many memories for the fans who love the songs the members of the tour have that same kind of thing going on when you hear, I mean, I know, I know the shows of each artist so well on a night to night basis and the fans. Now there's um, the singing along to the songs has become a natural progression of just people kind of waving the flag and saying, we, we just love these songs. And that's, that's the one of the things that I know um, warming up. Gary Puckett is fun to listen to. We always laugh because he, he had, his voice is just so unique. And uh, he's a very talented uh, singer and a performer on top of everything else. Gary, right. Gary's a great, great artist. And you know, you uh, have that same thing going with all the groups that they bring that to their show. It's just years of performing. And uh, that's what makes it fun because everybody knows everybody's songs and enjoys that, you know, period of time. All right. Do you, do you get a chance to watch the other bands perform or are you, since oh. since you are the, the headliner, you're, you're on last. Is it all preparation before you go on? Um, it's interesting. I never really thought of it as kind of like opening act, closing act. It, in a show that I envision, I envision that each artist brings his own carefully, you know, arrangements and have there's a there's a certain thing that's happening in these songs in terms of um, radio. They all really made a life for themselves on the radio. And when you hear their songs, it's important that they play the songs. The fans remember when they listened to the radio, to the girls they were dating, to the to just the changes that were going on in the world and everything else that it, it kind of covers. And uh, it says a lot because um, we all kind of stand on the side of the stage all night, you know? I, awesome. I find myself sitting there listening to all of the bands just sitting in the sidelines of the, of the stage. And the same with like from the beginning when the cow sales I don't think of them as like an opening act. They, when you hear the performance kind of guided by the songs in terms of what the material kind of needs to happen, just spiritually, fundamentally, you got to have the music has to kick in from the minute the announcer says, and welcome to the Happy Together show. And it brings you into the show. And that, that's sort of, we had, we had an album uh, in 68 uh, that featured Eleanor, um, Gee, I Think You're Swell, uh, You Showed Me, which was a Birds uh, record that was given to us by Gene, Jim McGuinn and uh, Gene Clark. 
uh, hearing those songs materialize, the ballads of the association are just so strong. And uh, everybody just loves to be there. Uh, and uh, we find that by the end of the night, we do a, uh, an ending in the show where we all sing together. And uh, it's, a, it's really fun to, to do. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because when we start putting together who's going to be on the show, it is materialized down to the five or six really good people, good shows, good, right. good uh, um, spirit. They're, they're, they're into it and they're enjoying doing it. And you can just you can just tell. That's that's really what it's all about. Yeah, now, Mark, yeah. I have um, one of my one of my favorite things, and I think it's a lot of people's favorite things is um, I have a I have a pick collection when I go to shows. Um, I got some really, really cool ones. Do you have anything like that that you've traded with <laughs> other uh, other you know musicians, whether it's um, set list from shows, whether it's picks, whether it's it's art? Uh, have you? Do you have anything like that? Well, uh, the, you know, whenever, like, if we did a show with a, a group, uh, like, uh, I want you to love me. Who was that song? That was uh, they want to. They're in the grand. Yeah, cheap trick. Oh yeah, cheap trick. Yes. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen their show, but they throw picks out in like hundreds, in the thousands. <laughs> And uh, I remember when we first played with them, you almost forget that you have your own fan base that creates a, a stardom for you that you kind of don't think about. And right. when you get their pick or they, they give you a T-shirt uh, like we do a few times, we work with the Doobie Brothers and we get like some shirts from the Doobie Brothers. That's cool. During our show. And uh, we've sat on stage and actually had dinner during their show while they sang. And uh, that was always like part of the night for, for both of us. That was really fun to do little silly <sighs> things like that. Gosh, that's that, that's amazing. Again, we're talking about uh, the Happy Together Tour, which just kicks off uh, in, in really just a, a few days right here. And again, I'm I'm located here in Florida. It kicks off June 1st and at Ruth Eckerd Hall in Clearwater. Now, Florida is usually at the end of the Happy Together Tour. Yeah. Um, we, we, and, we, and, we're, we, and we're starting it off this time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there, there's not really any particular reason that it happens, but we we notice that too because it's a day different, and we have, you know, we have friends in parts of the different country, uh, you know, country, and uh, so it's great to get a chance to come in. And uh, again, with the COVID, there was a lot of you know speculation. Right that first leg of this tour goes back to last year. So we actually put this tour as a, to fulfill what we use, usually did starting the years before. This is oh, okay. the 12th, 12th year. So we're bringing, even though like last year, we had a little different makeup with the classics four and with, the, the box tops and we had a little bit different this sort of ended up with the way that the we didn't have to kind of worry about it so much these are the cream of the crop of the happy together show i mean these these artists buckinghams have done this show with us maybe seven or eight times association go all the way back to 1984 with the happy together show so each one of these acts really fits probably the best cream of the, I don't like to say cream of the crop, but the best of the rest. You know? right. These are the best artists that we really started putting together, uh, you know, a decade plus ago. And uh, they remain strong artists, still viable to the marketplace. Uh, the people we work with are, 
you know, I think there's something to say. Did you see the Happy Together show? It's, it's amazing that they, the energy they have for the show. And it's a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we just enjoy each other. We enjoy the, the, the shows um, coming into the area. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing friends in, you know, Milwaukee and friends in, up in the east part of uh, Connecticut. And, you know, we have a lot of friends who's the Happy Together show has become a family feel, feel the thing. We, had, we get letters from families where they buy a dozen tickets and come out and they, uh, you know, sit backstage and have like a, a party. Uh, right. It's just an amazing thing. And we, we really look forward to it every year. That, that's awesome. Again, Florida friends uh, watching this, uh, June 1st, Clearwater, uh, June 2nd, Jacksonville, June 5th, Melbourne, and June 6th, Daytona for that Florida loop. Uh, it's it's going to be a fun time. Uh, I want to jump into a thing that uh, we do here on the Milo Beasley Show called the Milo Beasley Show Frequently Asked Questions. These are the same five questions that I ask to all my guests. Um, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to some of your answers here. So if you're ready, we'll go ahead and kick things off. Uh -oh. all right. Question number one, what was the first concert you ever attended? Oh, I ever like went to. Yes. Um, I went to a show in the shrine auditorium. Um, probably I'd say it had a lot to do with my life as a singer and musician. Um, in Los Angeles, I went to a junior high school, um, Orville Wright, junior high school, like the Wright brothers. Right. And, uh, um, I went and uh, the Shrine Auditorium was a massive theater, about 2,000 um, big, big auditorium. And I went and saw um, an, an opera. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, Madam Butterfly. Madam oh. Butterfly. I know it's not exactly what you were thinking, but Madam Butterfly was a, a fantastic story uh, that revolved around the, uh, this particular period of time. I don't want to take too, too much time telling the story, but um, the story uh, struck me as um, it was about um, a Japanese girl who was told that they would go to the United States when the war was over and she looked forward to it. And it's kind of a famous opera. And uh, that opera, uh, I, all I did was cry after that. And I didn't understand the story, which uh, if you go back and kind of look at it, but that that's the show um, that really changed my life when I just could feel the, what, what was going on in the story. So. That's, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a great, that's a great first, that's a great first concert. Uh, I want to take you back to November 12th, 1995, my first concert, Vinoy Park, St. Pete, the Turtles. Wow. wow. So I, yeah, the, the Turtles were, were my first concert. I know the date. Um, uh, I, I, I remember it vividly because that was the, that was the night that I was like, wait, this is the song from Ernest goes to camp. All right. Yeah. Uh, well, there were also the people who, uh, this was the song from the graham cracker cereal <laughs> commercial. It was like one of the first songs that actually, uh, was being used by companies for commercials and, it was a, an era that was beginning to start to change a lot in terms of the use of songs for film, television, right. and things like that. Happy Together was really the, the formula of what television was kind of looking for at that time. How were, how were we? Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Amazing. It was such a great night. It was such a great night. 
Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice one. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, question number two, do you believe in ghosts? <laughs> well, you have to be so careful. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I would, I would say that uh, the possibility uh, is that there uh, are uh, ghosts as much as there are extraterrestrials, and things of that nature. I would imagine right. you'd have to give it certain credibility. I feel like there's got to be something, maybe. Well, the, it's really the thought that we're the top of the food chain in terms right. of that idea is you have to go, yeah, there could be. I mean, it, plus I've seen it on TV, and if it's on TV, <laughs> it's probably true. Uh, question number three, it's a little bit of a twist to a common question, but in a movie about your life, who would play your parents? Uh, Tommy Lee Jones would uh, probably play my father. My mother, um, oh, that's a, <laughs> anybody come to mind? I'm asking my wife. <laughs> um, Tommy Lee Jones is a good one, though. Uh, my, my Maria. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Maria Campillo. Oh. <laughs> That's my grandmother. Uh, uh, she's pretty, stands out on her own pretty much. Uh, but uh, let's say I was, I'm, I'm a single father, home family, Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as, as far as social media goes, uh, who is your favorite person to follow on social media? And it's okay to say your wife. Oh yeah, oh, I, I, but I like uh, I like sports, so I like being able to follow uh, sports from other cities. Uh, in terms of uh, like, I'm a Dodger fan and have been since 1958. So uh, following the Dodgers, Pittsburgh. Um, Pittsburgh Pirates. I was a big, I don't know why. <laughs> Pittsburgh Pirates fan. I can sit here and name, you know, Bill Mazeroski, Bill Grote, Dick Grote. Um, um, you know, I can name the whole team pretty much. Right. Uh, but th a lot of that has to do with you just where you lived. Uh, when the Dodgers came to Los Angeles, I became a sports fan and uh, played baseball all the way up through high school when the Turtles were formulating and, uh, and the Crossfires, which was our band in high school, kind of materialized as the Turtles. Right. Uh, and then uh, we didn't really, uh, we, at that point, we really started working. Uh, that was 1965, first tour. Uh, the tour with the Dick Clark Caravan of Stars, which was the first tour we did with uh, the artists on that show were pretty spectacular. That was Ronnie Dove, Billy Joe Royal, um, some fantastic artists that, you know, would go on and become friends over and over again as we toured back during that, that period of time. Uh, and there was just a tremendous amount of artists going through the, the Dick Clark family of artists who we kind of fit into. And um, uh, uh, Dick Clark liked our show a lot. So he put us on those Dick Clark tours where he only played two songs. And right. so the idea of the Happy Together tour was to create, recreate that type of show. And, uh, they used to have an announcer um, who uh, announced all of the dates and uh, announced the show as it was going on and sang a couple of songs himself. Uh, and uh, so that was uh, that was a that was a good era 
for us to be able to see. I mean, we work with the Righteous Brothers. We work with a lot of artists from that period of time um, that uh, came out of like East LA, a lot of East LA uh, groups that were very popular uh, at that time. So uh, that's a, you know, uh, you know, meeting uh, Dick Clark had to be a big deal and um, which goes into our, our last question here. And that is amongst your travels, uh, your career uh, doing television, uh, you know, doing concerts. Have you had one of those fanboy moments where you saw somebody oh. and you were like, oh, my gosh, it's so and so I have to meet them or, oh, my gosh. I don't know what I'm going to say. Well, yes. I mean, I am such a groupie, I think, when it comes to, like, just fans. And I, I mean, everybody from, like, Jerry Lewis. I mean, most recently, about a year ago, we played at uh, Carnegie Hall. And uh, through the door walked one of my idols, uh, which was Joel Gray. And Joel Gray has to be one of the most overlooked, unfortunately. He's finally, you know, getting up in age. But uh, Joel uh, came to a show that we did at um, uh, New York City. And uh, we played at Carnegie Hall. And Joel did a song. Uh, it was a birthday party for an artist who we had sung sung with an artist by the name of Gavin Friday. And Gavin is a Scottish singer, uh, Irish, Irish singer. And um, Gavin, we did three albums with Gavin and uh, he was produced by a wonderful musical director from the uh, Saturday Night Live. His name was Hal Wilner. And Hal brought me and Howard in to sing with Gavin. You know, we've done a lot of backgrounds. We sing with Bruce Springsteen on Hungry Heart. Uh, we've sung with uh, a ton of artists from the Ramones to Frank Zappa, of course, and uh, many artists, uh, tw upwards of 20, 30 artists. Uh, and um, so, uh, Working with Joel Gray, getting a chance to stand next to Joel Gray, getting a stand to work with that group of people uh, was just amazing. Or how about with Frank Zappa when you walk in and find out John Lennon and Yoko Ono are going to sing on your show that night. And uh, we had a little bit of rehearsal and uh, did a they just released it on an album called 1971, uh, the Zappas have, and uh, it includes a whole lot of music that Howard and I did with Frank. And um, and there's a, how do you you know equate working with Frank Zappa and the intimacies that we shared putting together that music? And it's. Uh, it's been quite a time, you know. Uh, whenever I do a, a interview like this, it makes me tired. <laughs> uh, I just, I, I try not to uh, think of it in that way. It's um, it, when I moved to Nashville, it was amazing to me how many of the Nashville artists uh, knew the Turtles. Uh, I just didn't really like equated like that very much you know and it was funny Vince Gill and uh, Keith Urban and all, all these turtle fans you know I mean we go in and play the Ryman and it sells out four years in a row and, uh, it's amazing <clears throat> that those you know people are out there just like the questions you're asking they have their biggest fanboy right. moment too and it's discovering that the turtles is somebody else's fan boy. You know? that's, right. that's I, I, I couldn't imagine that feeling. Uh, so it's, it's gotta be a great one. Well, this is a great one being here with you. You might uh, not think about it like that, but it's uh, uh, who am I 
Come, you know, and who are you? You have a show. I'm sitting here in the outside, and my air conditioning is not working very well. Oh so, no! Yeah, so I'll call you. <laughs> All right. So uh, before we wrap up, uh, where can folks uh, find you? Follow you on social media. They want to see, you know, pictures of the upcoming tour. They want to find information about the upcoming tour. They want to find uh, your uh, your your teachings. Oh yeah, that thing too. <laughs> yeah, um, what would I give them? Here we got to here we got it on the bottom. There we go. We got to scroll in. Oh. One stop oh, yeah. shop. Everything you need for Mark Volman. Okay, that, that they can reach me. I'm not impossible to reach out to. I, I work with our artists all the time who uh, are interested in how we did maybe a vocal sound on a particular group. Uh, we, we've done a lot of the backgrounds. Like if you listen to the thing we did with the Ramones, we did an album with them and we sang on a few tracks and it was pretty amazing because Joey is, was a huge fan of the Turtles. And so he brought us into New York. Uh, and the funny story about that was Joey brought us in and he uh, had forgot to tell us that we were staying at a, his friend's apartment. We weren't going to get a hotel. We were going to, uh, in New York, we were going to stay at his friend's. Well, yeah. <laughs> and it was so funny because we walked in and I can remember the, the look on my partner's face when it was like, are oh, you got to be kidding? You know, it was like, <laughs> Joey, what are you doing? Come on, we'll go over to the hotel and stay at the hotel. And it right. was like, okay, let me call. And then you went through all this. And um, it was very funny because, you know, he was putting this in. It was left over from uh, uh, a Hooters, not a Hooters, uh, what do you call that thing where it's all full of garbage and stuff? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> More like hoarders than anything. <laughs> but it's amazing to me. Uh, 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 we were talking about this recently. You know, when we did the the album 1971, which is Zappas are just releasing, it includes uh, the album where Frank got pushed into the orchestra pit, which was a you know a young fan uh ran up on stage and hit him at the end of the show and frank slid down about 10 feet and landed on his back fractured his back fractured his shoulders i mean he was it, it was not a not a healthy recovery either it took about a year and a half right i ended the band at that period of time we had done 200 motels i mean there's a there's a there's a whole lot that kind of goes on on to that but we were uh, laughingly talking about the fact that we had been we had done an album with uh, Stephen Stills, Mark Boland, T-Rex. I mean we've done something like 25 artists who are in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame songs that we sang on you know Bang right. a Gong, Get It On um, and um, that someday that'll be a legacy that, you know, we complain so much about not being in that they'll have to put us in eventually. <laughs> Probably not. But. Oh, no, I, I say, I, I absolutely. I, if I was a voter, I'm saying yes. Well, Mark <laughs> G, I think you're swell, but unfortunately that is our time Bring for today. Time, joy, et cetera. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I could sit here and talk to you all day, but thank you for, for taking the time and chat with me this morning. I, I absolutely, truly appreciate it. Well, I appreciate you, uh, giving us this uh, ability to step out, remind people that we'll be coming through and, uh, it's a good show. It's a really good show. And, uh, the, the band has been together about 12 years. So, I mean, it's not a bunch of you know, right. people who don't know what a C chord is. <laughs> uh, so it's uh, it's uh, it's nice that you're here for us to uh, communicate through and with. And if you need to reach me, you've got us. 
Fantastic. Uh, thank you for hanging out. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget happy together tour starts, kicks off June 1st in Clearwater goes through Florida. And, uh, I, I I'm super excited. So thank you again for, uh, for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys next week. Adios.